Louise Crawford is a councillor with the City of Port Phillip. That includes suburbs like Elwood, St Kilda, Port Melbourne and a few others. And there are a lot of theatres in the City of Port Phillip including the National Theatre, the Palais Theatre, Gasworks Theatre, Phoenix Theatre. And Louise herself is a performer. She's appeared on shows like Offspring, Upper Middle Bogan, Home and Away and Neighbours. So it's no surprise that councillor Crawford is an advocate and a supporter of arts in our local community. Welcome, Louise. Oh, thanks for having me. Louise, I noticed on your Instagram, you um, you say that you're a human in search of a kind of politics. What, what do you mean by that? Andrew, I like to think that that if we considered politics not so much a, an us against them, but we're all humans trying to make the world a better place and you treat people uh, as humans, like, you know, yelling at other people doesn't make them change their mind. You know, having reasonable conversations and, and looking at different points of view, that might change someone's mind. So I, I just think that there's a, the politics we've got into are very adversarial and, and they can be really nasty and personal. And I don't think that's necessary. You can argue an issue, but making it about people, like we're all humans underneath. You can, you know, you can, you can talk about an issue, but if someone's having a go at you, your humanness underneath being a politician can't help but get your back up and not want to work with that person or you know what I mean it, it it does we're still humans playing this game of politics or not even playing doing this game um, and I just think that there are different ways we can be more collaborative and kinder to each other so it's a different kind of conversation we have mm. I, I think it's possible I really do I think it just takes a, a reframing that the way we speak to each other is also a good not role model because that's crap but Imagine if all your politicians spoke nicely to each other as opposed to this bickering stuff that goes on a lot. Louise, as I mentioned in the intro, you, you are a, a supporter of arts in our community. Why, why do you think local arts is so important? Well, being an actor myself, I think that anything creative connects us to our humanness. I think, imagine life without anything creative. It would be so depressing and so um, so bland. And I think our local arts, we forget, like we look at, go to the movies and see, you know, the, the, the 1% that have made it. But most art starts at home, like you go to your school productions or you go to your friend's art gallery opening or you're painting at home or you're writing at home or you're taking photographs of your local area. Like everything is kind of local, where you start, where your career may end up if that's where you want to go is different. But this area particularly, um, one of the things I love about it has always been a, a real home of the arts in Melbourne, in Victoria. And, and this council that I'm now part of has, has had a long history of supporting that. And I think if we don't start at home, how do, you, how do people train and get better and develop their craft if, if they're not trying it in a local sense? And what do you think council's role is in actually supporting the arts? Look, I think a big part of it is funding. Like, I do think that actually the bet, more we step out of the way and let artists do what they do and support them with, through funding mechanisms or um, facilities, that's the best thing we can do. I think it art's something that comes from within or within your community. I don't think it's anything that council can do. So really it's a support mechanism, which I, I think City of Port Phillip does well. Like they support different theatrical groups, you know, people with men, um, mental health issues and disabilities. And then there's, um, uh, then there's a lot of indie theatres that we help support. There's tap, the Tapestry Workshop in South Melbourne. There's, there's just so many, but there's grants that they can apply for. So, I mean, obviously money is the, probably the biggest and hardest thing for most artists. We are trying to highlight like creative tourism that, try to highlight all the amazing things that happen here so why wouldn't you want to come and hang out here spend money here you know because there are so many great different things to do and see all of the time except obviously in COVID um, so it's probably supporting what we've got here but at the same time not totally open to attracting more people and different arts communities or or um the technical side, like South Melbourne, Port Melbourne have huge you know sound studios there's a whole lot of um, on the on the behind the scenes side that is also located in the municipality, not just the performance side. Coming out of stage four and coming out of COVID restrictions, 
it's going to be more important than ever to promote social connections and, and, and rebuild our community. How, how is council going to help rebuild our community? So uh, in a week or two, Kat and I are bringing a motion. So did you, I'm not sure if you're aware, we have postponed the St Kilda Fest for a year. Obviously it's not gonna happen next year, but we've put that money aside, which is $1.7 million to use to support economic and cultural and arts um, rebuild in our community. Um, and we're just working out criteria or what it could fund. So the idea being that whatever, because I think, again, people will come to us with projects where they might say, could we do this? And we'll have the money and help facilitate those things, whether it be shut a street and have a street party really spaced out. But you know what I mean? Where a community has whatever they think is a good thing. Um, we're also... Um, asking officers to look at opportunities to allow the arts to use more of our open spaces without permits and things like that, which would, would be much more restricted, but we want people to, you know, if that park could have, you know, a band play for an hour in the afternoon, let's, let's, let's facilitate it. You know what I mean? So looking at how can we actually get out of the way again, not make it harder for people to do that, but there will also be funds to, try and support all of the different activities that people want to do. Do you think COVID and social distancing is going to refocus the value that we place on the arts? Yeah, I imagine that the first time people go back to the movies or the, to a live performance of some sort will probably be the most exciting moment for 2020. You know, like if you get to go and do that, you might realise how important those experiences are. I hope so. I don't know. There's so much people. I think people are so stressed at the moment. Mm. You just wonder what, how much registers, you know, there's so much going on for them. Yeah. But I'd like to think that the art will, you know, people will value it and realise that it has made a difference to them. I think we've got it all upside down. Like all the, all the professions that matter the most, like the ones that are about caring for children, teachers, you know, paramedics, all of those, we don't pay them properly. But actually, when it comes to the crunch, that's the stuff you count on the most. Louise, thank you so much for chatting with me today. No, thank you. It's been really great.